Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 14th, 2022, around 1.45 p.m. Eastern Time. We don't have much to talk about today, but a look at a couple of tropical cyclones that could be forming in the East Pacific over the next couple of days. A look at when the Atlantic Basin might wake up and some crazy severe weather across portions of the Northwest U.S. today. So it's going to jump straight into everything. Taking a weather look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, not much is occurring today, thank goodness. We do have a little bit of an upper level low right here sitting near the Bahamas at the moment. And while this doesn't really show any signs of potential tropical development, this will be increasing rainfall chances to portions of the Florida Peninsula and Florida Keys over the next several days. We have a couple of tropical waves out here across the Atlantic Basin, but all else seems to be pretty quiet for the time being. And for that reason, there is no tropical cyclone formation expected in the Atlantic Basin over the next several days. This was put together yesterday, but still stands as of today, July 14th. In the East Pacific Basin, we have a couple of things occurring today. First of all, we have Hurricane Darby, still a hurricane. This is now beginning to weaken, not as well-defined structure today. There is still an eye structure that is apparent on the visible satellite here. We can see that uh, as these frames load in here. We notice that there is still a little bit of an eye structure this morning uh, here, but there's not really much going on. There is still convection trying to wrap around and so this is still trying to keep that engine going, but it's not really going to be going uh, for much longer. We do have, again, the chance that this will be a tropical cyclone south of Hawaii. So maybe some passing showers and thunderstorms uh, to portions of Hawaii, but all else seems to be quiet. Again, the wind and most of the impacts will be confined south of Hawaii. So there is no significant threats to the island there as this begins to weaken this is expected to become a remnant circulation by sunday and well really by saturday evening into early sunday morning looking back across most of the other parts of the tropical pacific we have this new disturbance today this has been tagged invest area 96e right over here now this is expected by most models to be moving off towards the north and west and generally stay away from coastal Mexico. All of these tracks here are the model tracks and intensities and we notice that they are not really expecting any storm to get anywhere close to the island or really I'm sorry to the coastline of Mexico or the Baja Peninsula. And so this will likely become another hurricane as this moves out into the warmer waters before finally reaching the colder waters and dissipating up here around in the subtropical Pacific, but no other impacts are expected. And if we actually look here at the forecast here from the GFS, this is the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground. Again, here's our wave right here. This is Invest 96E, and we'll be watching for other disturbances back in this region but as it stands so far, most of the models do not have any significant land impacts for the next while. And so it seems like for the most part, uh, we will have a couple more tropical cyclones developing in the East Pacific Basin. And that is kind of confined also in the European forecast as well, where we have at least this next system developing. But other than that, it does not look like there'll be any significant land concerns for portions of the you know Mexico or the Baja Peninsula at that particular time. Now, if we shift into the Atlantic Basin, we'll be watching for what could be happening next. If we look at the precipitation anomalies here, we'll look at the EPS ensembles here. And what we notice is that again, we generally have where we do have more moisture that will be coming off the coast of Africa by the end of the forecast period. That's the 6Z run. So we'll go back to the 0Z where it's just longer range. And we notice that generally speaking, after we get past this next bout of unfavorable conditions, it seems like the Atlantic Basin will begin to kind of open up. We have this big patch of green over here suggesting that we'll have more moisture in the atmosphere than normal. And that will certainly allow for the potential for some possible development as we go forth in time. If you look at the 200 millibar wind here on the European ensembles, Again, generally speaking right now, pretty unfavorable conditions, but that will begin to reverse. And by the end of the forecast period, we have pretty anomalous easterly winds across in the upper part of the atmosphere. This basically goes to suggest that any tropical wave moving off towards the west will have pretty light shear to contend with across most of the Atlantic. And then as it starts to get into the Caribbean, we will have more unfavorable conditions as a result of an upper level low sitting out here. 
but all else seems to be pretty quiet. If we look at what is to be expected on the heights here, and if we go and really look at the shear, again, shear looks pretty good, but we're also expecting generally lower pressures than average across most of the deep tropics out in the long range. And what this is going to do is allow for gradual warming of the tropical Atlantic. And then we have higher pressures out here across these subtropics, which will generally allow for conditions to cool off the subtropics and then warming in the tropical Atlantic. Now we'll have to see how this actually plays out because there is still some model discrepancies. If we look at the GFS ensembles, for instance, here in the semi sort of longer range, again, we go back to the 6Z run and we notice that we generally have pressures that are average to slightly above average where comparatively on the European forecast, they are certainly below average across most of the tropical Atlantic. So we'll have to kind of keep an eye on that. But seems like based on this, that conditions will be favorable for uh, tropical activity to pick up once we get into early August. Now, focusing on the continuous United States and what to expect here over the next couple of hours in the next day or so, well, first of all, we have a slight risk for severe storms today, generally across portions of the Northwest, including uh, places in North Dakota, all the way through Iowa and Minnesota, and a marginal risk surrounding that, and even a marginal risk for portions of Montana into Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, but again, the main threats today are damaging wind, 15 wind and hail, but there is an isolated tornado threat today, mainly across portions of North Dakota into uh, portions of then South Dakota and far western portions of Minnesota, there is a risk for tornadoes as well. There's actually a severe thunderstorm warning right now. Uh, again, you can kind of see what we're dealing with. Pretty strong cell looking here. Uh, pretty good hail core even on the composite radar. We have a pretty strong hail core. And so let's see, the severe thunderstorm warning is for 60 mile power winds, quarter sized hail, both radar indicated, but some probably some pretty good hail coming off of that as well. Again, the dew points in this area, we're running dew points that are pretty high in the mid and upper 60s across this area with potentially even upper 60s dew points across portions of Minnesota. So this definitely gives some vibes that we could have kind of like a QLCS uh, dipping southward from Canada in across portions of the United States here. If we actually take a look at what we can expect, if we look at the um, the model fill here, and we go to the, the HRRR forecast, we notice that, again, we have these storms right here that will be dipping southward with time, and those can definitely then pose some interesting uh, thoughts as we go forth in time. So we'll have to watch these because again, you can kind of see that the HRRR is not really picking up on this activity very well right now. So we'll go back and look at the NAM uh, 12 kilometer and you can kind of see again, it's not really picking up on that too much, but uh, we'll have to kind of see how this all begins to play out with time. But again, the general risk for severe storms today is mainly going to be across portions of the Northwest US and then, of course, we do have some ongoing severe weather across portions of Texas right now. If we actually look and turn on the radar, we have some potential for some hail and wind damage uh, with kind of this ongoing cluster of storms to the southwest of, of Dallas. And that will be moving south into the Waco area and into the Austin, Texas area over the next couple of hours. There is a mesoscale discussion here watching likely 20 percent. So we'll be watching for that. But all else seems to be quiet. And then we'll be watching if we kind of pull up the east uh, mesosector here and we just look at the uh, satellite. Again, we'll be watching this upper level low that's sitting right here. There's a broad upper level low. We can actually see that in the, the uh, wind plot here. There's an upper level low here moving towards Florida. And this is expected to bring an increase in, in shower and thunderstorm activity now, what's interesting today, either there is actually some thunderstorms kind of near the center of where this upper level low is. Now, again, this is an upper level low. This is not a surface low. So that does not mean that tropical development is likely. But we'll see how this hangs around over the next day or two because upper level lows can sometimes work its way down to the surface with enough persistent convection. So we'll see if this is either diurnally driven or this is able to sustain itself throughout the you know day, throughout the diurnal minimum, 
And then as we approach evening with the uh, diurnal maximum, so we'll see how this kind of interacts here, but we may have to watch this down the road, but I'm just not really so sure. But either way, there will be an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity. This much broader upper level disturbance will be moving over Florida over the next couple of days, bringing with it some shower and thunderstorm activity and certainly an increase in rain chances, but nothing super significant. All right. So that being said, I'll be a very great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I'm Michael Rowley, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.